Okay, to finish off this topic of files in multi-track mode, let's have a look at virtual tracks, what they are and why do you need them? Now, Tascam uses a concept of loading virtual tracks into physical tracks, which to me seems a misleading way to look at it, as no audio data is being loaded or moved. In fact, the additional footnotes in the manual appear to be only necessary because they described it like this. So for what it's worth, here's my attempt at describing the system. Now it may help or it may just confuse you even more, but here goes. Now as we've seen, each recorded track is stored in one or more files on the SD card. And the machine also keeps a list of pointers to these files so it can jump around on the fly and give the illusion of a seamless audio track. Now what if we go one step further and use a mega pointer which points to everything related to that track, all its files and all its pointers. If we just change this mega pointer, we can access a whole new set and it would appear to be another track from nowhere. And this is the virtual track system. Each set of files and pointers for a track is called a virtual track. And this machine supports eight sets, or eight virtual tracks. So there's one of these mega pointers for each of the 24 or 32 tracks, depending on your machine, and they are under your control. You change it in the virtual track screen, which you can get by pressing this button, virtual track. And just like the other screens, you must select the required track first, and confirm its name appears at the top right before changing it. Now after a factory reset, all the pointers are pointing at virtual track one. The virtual tracks are allocated in order, so you'll only see one option marked unused. But once you've used it, in other words, recorded something, its name changes to virtual track one to eight, and the next unused virtual track becomes available, and so on, up to a maximum of eight. We can see here track five, we didn't record anything on, so virtual track one is unused. Whereas track one, we did record something, so virtual track one is used, and it's saying the next one, number two, is the next available, currently unused. If we go down to the unused one, press load. We're now pointing at virtual track two. Arm the track and record. And this recording is completely separate to the original track one recording. I go to virtual track. I can see now I've used two of these virtual tracks. And whichever one I select, is the one that all the other operations will operate on. So if I play back now, I'll be playing back virtual track one. If I play back now, I'll be playing back virtual track two. But they are both referring to physical track one on the machine. So the key thing to remember is that when the machine is performing any operation on a track, whether it be recording or playing back or editing, or even exporting, it's not actually accessing the track files directly. It's always going via this mega pointer, and this can only point to one of eight possible virtual tracks at any one time. So the machine thinks it's operating on, say, track five, but it could be any of the eight virtual tracks allocated to track five. The machine doesn't know or care that it's really a different set of files on the card. So hopefully it should now be clear that any track operation can only affect the single virtual track which you've chosen in this screen. If you want to operate on another virtual track, you have to set it first. And this applies to exporting, which answers another frequent question as this is just another track operation. Now you might ask, what's the point? 
virtual tracks sounds a bit of a cheat. They don't increase the number of tracks for recording or playing back, but they do provide a convenient parking area, in this case eight parking areas, for each of the 24 or 32 tracks. And you can use these how you like, in any combination. You could use Virtual Track 1 on one of the tracks, Virtual Track 3 on another track. You don't have to keep them in step. A typical use for this is for handling multiple takes. You record something, switch to another set of virtual tracks and record again and so on. Then do the same for playback. Other machines use similar schemes. Fostex calls them alternative tracks and their 8-track D108 model uses tracks 9 to 24 for this and it uses a track exchange function instead of Tascam's load function. And this gives the illusion of exchanging or swapping tracks around, but they're really just swapping pointers. No audio data is being moved. Okay, I mentioned multiple takes, so here's another option. If you use virtual tracks for these, it's fairly easy to set up as you just select the next virtual track before each take. But it can be tricky to compare the takes afterwards as the playback keeps stopping whenever you change virtual tracks. So another possibility is to use spare tracks instead of virtual tracks, assuming you've got some spare ones of course. So say you're only using tracks 1, 2 and 3 for take 1. You could use tracks 4, 5 and 6 for take 2 and then 7, 8, 9, assuming you made 9 a mono, for take 3, and so on. Now this method may be harder to set up, as you have to reassign inputs to the new tracks before each take, although you could always plan ahead and assign them before the session. As we saw before, assigned inputs do not go anywhere unless the track is armed. And you'd also need to replicate any effects or send routing on the new tracks. So it may be too much trouble, but the beauty is when you come to playback, you can just use the track faders or mute and solo buttons to switch between all the takes on the fly without stopping the playback. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And unless something else crops up, the next one will look at two ways of mixing down. So see you then.